In this edition of Hashtag Unplugged, we'll be doing a virtual interview with two esteemed panelists. The first, Ki Yao Yi, Chief Information Officer, Starhub, and David Neo, Vice President, Global Services, APEC, UiPath. Together, we'll talk on streamlining current and legacy processes to drive productivity with robotic process automation, how AI and automation can augment complex knowledge-based processes to optimize workflow to meet increasing demands from employees, supply chain partners, and customers. So I'll start off with David. David, perhaps you can share more about UiPath and the important work that you are doing in the company. Uh, thanks, Sokten. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here today with you and Yaoyi. Um, I've been with UiPath for two years now, and I lead the global services for Asia Pacific. And uh, that comprises pre-sales, customer services, and professional services teams. Uh, so together, we help customers to experience, deploy, uh, use, and then scale their organizations with high automation. Uh, so we're working with customers before they adopt the solution, then take our customers through the entire customer journey to build out the automation program uh, and their capabilities, and then we help them uh, to succeed uh, with hyper automation. And I've got to say that at the moment, we're doing a lot of remote conferencing with our customers, just like we're doing with you now. Great. Looks like this is a real new normal for everybody moving forward. It certainly is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yao Yi, uh, would you mind sharing a little bit about your CI role in Starhub? Yes, yes, Kok uh, Good morning to you too. I took on the CIO role about three years ago. I am responsible for the IT strategy, the IT infrastructure, systems and applications required to support Starhub's business growth and customer goals. Uh, the cybersecurity role is also under my duty of care. That's a very big portfolio, I would say. It's all right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yowie, okay, this is for you. Um, globally, most telecom players are transforming as they face a multitude of challenges from low growth increasing capex burden mix, shifting market structures, disruptive business landscapes of changing regulatory and policy framework. Against this backdrop as head of IT, what are your key priorities and strategic imperatives for Starhub's digital transformation journey? Together with my team, we are progressively refreshing and consolidating our legacy stacks. Uh, we are virtualizing, cloudifying our platforms where possible and exploring technologies that can better deliver uh, uh, business outcomes at a lower cost. So we work very closely with the business divisions to deliver meaningful user experiences for our customers' evolving needs. At the moment, I can sum up what we are doing uh, into three key priorities. First of all, we are modernizing Starhub's IT landscape by adopting several agile and digital technologies in areas like data virtualization, artificial intelligence, low-code DevOps, 5G, and of course, automation. Secondly, we're in the midst of a radical uh, rationalization and refresh of our legacy IT platforms and systems. We started this journey last year. And last but not least, we are optimizing Starhub's um, IT operations with, uh, by right sourcing it to a technology partner uh, with an aim to achieve a lower cost of operations while striving for better and higher standards in operation service level performance. So these priorities, when executed, will deliver an enhanced customer experience through the simplification of systems and processes, and then achieve a quicker time to market as well as a lower cost to serve. So these are our priorities at this moment. That's also a handful. Really, really big, big shoulders that you have <laughs> moving forward. Uh, David, since COVID-19 hit, I think uh, we have observed a significant rise uh, in demand for RPA licenses, and organizations are accelerating, as you alluded to earlier, uh, their enterprise automation journey. What are the business cases you're observing now? How are organizations adopting RPA as part of their business continuity management plan? You know, COVID has caused uh, really a massive shock that has already severely impacted uh, businesses, supply chains, and economies around the world. So uh, I've got to say that even before uh, the COVID pandemic, uh, businesses had ECM plans and uh, they also began designing and using automation solutions like RPA, right, so that they can govern better, work faster, smarter, and become more efficient. Uh, and that's because these uh, software robots mimic the actions of humans and they can capture data, right, from digital systems and they have AI computer vision and can manipulate the applications just like humans do. And for a long time, these robots have been just quietly doing their work. Uh, uh, 
uh, communicating with other systems to form a variety of repetitive tasks. Uh, and the business cases made a lot of sense because the robots uh, did it substantially faster, uh, error-free, and all the while working tasks, they don't take holidays, right? Uh, they don't go on vacations, even though we don't have vacations these days, uh, you know, given the situation. But uh, they work 24 by 7 with huge workloads. So um, that was a result of the pandemic. We're just seeing organizations being forced to adjust their operations, their sales engagements uh, to a more remote operation mode. And, uh, you know, digital first seems to be, uh, you know, the catchphrase at the moment. And as a result, we're seeing some of, uh, you know, these things driving business cases uh, around RPA. And uh, firstly, uh, we're seeing strong uh, cases uh, made around RPA to improve business performance and uh, risk mitigation. Uh, also, we're seeing uh, strong business cases for accelerating the growth of digital services. Uh, for example, right, when it comes to retail and financial institutions, uh, they are also experiencing a reduction in point of sales and card list transactions happening at merchants and physical stores. I mean, Microsoft just made a decision to place all their online stores, right? So the business cases here have been around bringing critical business services online and just increasing the throughput of handling these types of transactions across the entire uh, you know, payment processing life cycle. And what definitely helps here is our ability to automate customer service, to batch processing faster, uh, perform settlement, and just reconcile many of these online transactions. Uh, more we are seeing solid uh, business cases around reducing uh, all sorts of processing backlogs and improving uh, delivery of critical uh, business services. Uh, this is just in line with the need for digitizing services and bringing them all online across all industries. We see telecom call centers and they've had to respond uh, to the increased demand for consumer broadband and price connectivity. Uh, you know, and that's great for companies like Starhub. Okay, that's great, uh, uh, David. Uh, clearly, I think uh, uh, what you've just articulated and so forth, the, the landscape, the environment has actually changed. Uh, and I think in a post-COVID era, we're going to certainly see uh, very different ways of uh, businesses connecting with the customers, as well as the business on the back end itself. So on this note on RPA and how it's able to actually address all these uh, spike in volumes and uh, try and still create the efficiencies within the business. Let me come back to Yao Yi. We spoke earlier and you said RPA, uh, you started, uh, Starhub started your RPA journey like about two years ago, and you had commented that you were late into this area. Can you share what had preceded in your own RPA experience and con that convinced you RPA is, is an essential part of an organization's transformation journey. journey. Yes, yes. Uh, I will share with you some of my experience. Actually, three years ago was when we first embarked on our RPA journey. I knew then that many organizations were already using RPA rather extensively. So that gave my team and I the impetus to start this journey without any further hesitation. We didn't need any convincing at all. We focused on where we needed to get to. Uh, and we experimented with a few leading RPA tools available in the market at that time. And we, and we actually narrowed down to one eventually. So the way we have approached RPA deviated a little bit from the usual technology angle. We started by addressing the concerns of our employees uh, that they may have, that the concerns that our employees may have if we were to approach them and tell them that some of their tasks will be automated. Right? So instead of causing any unnecessary anxiety, uh, we pitched RPA as a way to repurpose some of the unproductive effort and time that the employees are spending on manual and repetitive tasks so that the employees can actually work on more value-added uh, work. And uh, what uh, we also did was that we engaged with HR first and they are a very, very good, they are great support for the RPA and together we addressed the employee's concern. We also addressed the audit and compliance side of the equation where we made sure that from a separation of duties and access rights were handled properly. Then we proceeded to uh, invite employees to bring to us their time-consuming and repetitive tasks that are holding them back. Right? So we reviewed these processes, we improved on them before we applied RPA to automate them. Once we have built this foundation, the rest of the RPA is really about just onboarding more and more processes, improving on them and then automating them with the bots. Now once people start to see for themselves what RPA can deliver for them, the news spread by word of mouth and more people actually approached us to come on board. The folks who benefited from RPA became the advocates for RPA. Right? So I have an excellent team comprising young, energetic IT folks who are able to engage with the business, 
We are able to onboard them onto the RPA journey and at the same time turn them into uh, RPA advocates. So um, I think that um, it has been a very interesting and rewarding journey for Starhub. So am I correct in saying that uh, you have a, a like a SWAT team as an RPA team that goes around and uh, engages the business users and understand it? And these people are primarily primarily IT uh, background or mixed. Mm -hmm. They are actually IT background, but they have worked a lot with business, uh, either mm -hmm. in some kind of uh, uh, consulting jobs or projects, whereby they understand a little bit about business processes. So that is a very good foundation uh, for the team to build on. So you're not just going in from a purely technical angle. Uh, and I think that, that the understanding between the teams, they, it reached a gap between the users and IT, and that actually uh, propelled RPA at a speed that was uh, a little bit faster than what I thought it was. I wanted to call it a center of excellence team, but it's a little bit cliche, so we just call it an RPA team. And we also wanted to build a showcase for it, but then I think the employees themselves and what they say about RPA is the showcase by itself. So we don't really have to do much once RPA took traction and then um, people started to request for more of that to apply to their respective divisions. Excellent, excellent. Okay, David, uh, um, you know, you highlighted a lot of uh, use cases and uh, different industries you linked in. It'd be interesting to understand how UiPath helps your customer look ahead because there's uh, these dynamic changes in business process due to the external environment and touch points. We mentioned about digital touch point, digital ecosystem earlier. Uh, how, how do you help customer engage and look ahead of the dynamic changes here in the business automation process? Uh, and you know, the your customers will be sitting in environments where there's a cloud, there's SaaS application, there's in-house application, a myriad of things. Uh, perhaps you'd like to give us some insights to that. Well, firstly, uh, we work with our customers, right? Uh, closely to discover the best business processes to automate with, um, you know, automation. And uh, then we do it by crowdsourcing, right? Basically, we try to get customers to crowdsource suggestions from their own employees like Yao Yi has and also perform further discovery with uh, task mining and process mining solutions. So uh, the platform provides a lifecycle management with everything that's needed, uh, and that's for visibility, transparency, control. Uh, and so we do this by providing advanced capabilities for professional developers, and also simple tools uh, for what we term citizen developers or part-time developers. Uh, we also provide high quality of free training and support resources. And as Yao Yi mentioned, uh, that's uh, really important uh, uh, during the ramp up stage uh, so that uh, you know, we can, can get people to the stage where they're comfortable. And then after the document becomes showcases, I really love the term Yao Yi that you use, right? The employees themselves are the showcase. Um, and then uh, you make it possible to bring together a you know, combination of tendered, unattended hybrid automations, uh, just working in harmony. And then uh, the important part here is uh, engaged humans, right? Because they are, you know, one of the most important uh, pieces of puzzle. Uh, the governance, the collaboration between the teams uh, and functions, uh, and then provide them insights into uh, the operational uh, and business uh, parts of the automation. So uh, this part is the operating model. Uh, you know, it's really important that you need to go through that uh, to help them to look ahead, to manage the dynamic changes in uh, the business uh, process automation. And I've got to say, uh, our mission here at UiPath has always been to democratize RPA and help everyone to have, you know, uh, a vision for, if not the reality, uh, for a robot for every person. Uh, we believe there's a role for providing a steady stream of citizen developer-led opportunities. So we've got large customers that are doing this today. And uh, we've seen staff who have no, uh, just no technical background, right? Uh, business users learn to use uh, Studio X quickly and, and then chip in as citizen developers by automating their own Excel uh, and Outlook tasks. And, you know, this makes automation accessible to all. Uh, every citizen developer in the company can create, modify automations and, and just, uh, you know, eliminate the onerous and, uh, you know, repetitive tasks. So we believe this creates happiness uh, as no one misses boring work, right? And uh, people become more productive uh, typically, you can save maybe 1% or 3% or 5% of time through simple task automation. But when you take it across the entire company, uh, these gains, they are really significant because they add up right to the whole. And uh, that's where you get the uh, operational efficiencies across the entire organization. Uh, so what we're doing is just uh, removing the limitations our customers' workforce uh, face 
uh, give them back the time to do uh, meaningful work. So uh, these are the ways in which we help our customers look ahead and uh, just stay on top of dynamic challenges to transform their business. So Yoi, I think uh, it's, you know, as you start building our robots, uh, uh, what are your thoughts in leveraging this automation with AI, sort of hyper-automate your business outcomes because uh, your transaction volumes are probably big, big within the telco? We are quite excited by the AI capabilities in UiPath and we are actually in the process of exploring that capability and uh, testing out a, predict a prediction model in one of our business functions in StarHub. The, fun the fundamentals of RPA remains unchanged. Um, I think the ability to extract, collect huge amounts of data from different sources relatively quickly and easily, feeding this input into a prediction model or engine, and then taking the output using that to perform the next step. Uh, plus, the fact that there's ability for UiPath engine to integrate with third-party solutions, those definitely enhances the um, RPA functionality and capability. This is definitely a step up from the usual automation, and uh, we're definitely... Um, um, really waiting in anticipation where this can lead us. So we're still in the experimental phase. Um, and I think uh, what will be interesting to find out is whether the, the degree of accuracy that the AI can actually achieve. So with sufficient trials and use cases, we should be able to expand this to our customers and our staff alike. So if this is what you meant by hyper-automation, I think we are on this track. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, clearly, uh in terms of intelligent automation, it holds immense potential moving forward now. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Yaoi, David, thank you so much for your time this morning. Um, and to the audience, thank you very much. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, thank you. Bye.